Janelle, you're messing up my continuity. Jumping right into it this week, welcome back. Week two of Corgi Ensemble. This week's video is brought to you by the letter C. Not for corgi or costume, cosplay, Christmas, no, wrong holiday. Crafting, creation, cacophony. Well, almost actually. No, it is brought to you by C for construction because there is so much construction happening in my neighborhood that we're gonna do a lot of voiceover this week. As promised, this week we're going to be finishing the rest of the ensemble, including the cape, the collared shirt, the collared shirt, the collared shirt, the waistcoat and the accessories, including the magnifying glass and Sherlock Holmes' infamous pipe. Our starting point for designing this costume is going to be a pattern that I used to make Robin Hound in 2016's Renaissance Fair. The pattern pieces include the main body, and the collar. So we're going to see how we can use these and modify them to make this a Sherlock Holmes costume. And like last week, because we still only have a limited quantity of fabric to work with, we're going to make a mock-up first. An essential part of the Sherlock Holmes look is the Inverness cape, which is basically a coat with a cloak attached. To make that cloak, I traced a large circle onto my fabric and then measured how much I needed to cut out for the circumference of her neck using the collar from the Robin Hood costume as a template. I then cut this out of the middle of the circle, essentially creating a circle skirt for her neck. Once that was done, I then laid it out on the main body of the fabric, pinned it together, and then tried it on to make sure that it would fit. So now that we've verified that the pattern pieces do more or less work, the trick is going to be to figure out how exactly we're going to cut all of this out from our fashion fabric. Wish me luck. All right, so I think I've got it figured out. If I put the biggest part of the circle here on the thigh of the pants, that leaves me all of the rest of this for the other piece of the costume. I think I can do one half of this thigh, the second half out of the second thigh, and sew them together, see how that works. Alright, so here we have the two halves cut out out of each thigh. It was a little bit of a puzzle piece trying to figure out where exactly I needed to cut each half, but we did it and now we just need to sew it together along the middle. So here are the scraps that we have left over after that whole process and now we just need to figure out how to get the main body cut out of those scraps. So I think I've got it figured out. If I sew them together here, along this seam, then that should give me enough room to be able, let's open this up here, fit the entire thing. It does not give me a whole lot of room on either side, but it should be doable. All cut out, sewn together, and ironed. Now we just need to cut out the pattern piece. So for the lining, I have all these scraps of deep red fabric which I found in the garbage can of our costuming department. Thank you Christmas costumes. And now I just need to figure out how to piece them together to make the lining. Cue lots of tedious piecing of slippery red fabric. So after piecing together many small parts of red fabric, this is what it looks like. It's all sewn together, pinned down, and almost all complete. Next up is binding the edges. So this binding comes from the inside of a leather cape that my roommate threw away. I will spare you the details, but here you can see I've cut out the lining from the sleeve and I'm going to 
divide it into thin strips like this and cut them out, sew them together, iron them, and stitch them onto the edges of the cape to make the different layers pop a little bit and stand out from each other. So now the cape is fully lined and bound, and now I'm just going to pin it together and then sew it onto the main body of the coat, which I will then completely edge bind as well. Collared shirt. For the collared shirt, I have some scraps of white linen laying around, so I've just finished off one edge to look like the edge of a button-up shirt, and I'm going to join it to the other half here first, sew it together, and then I'm going to cut out the main front placard to make it look like she's wearing a collared shirt. So now it's all sewn together and now I have the pattern piece laying on. We will cut it out, stitch it together, and add a collar. Ta-da! Collared shirt front. Now I just stitched on some quick buttons and it was time to try it on. So it's looking pretty good for a first try. I'm really pleased. I just used some pins to tack the shirt front onto the body of the coat to hold it in place to mark where I should sew it on. The next step, I will definitely sew this in place. Also, there's some weird bunching going on, so I need to take up a bit of slack up here and dye the collar so that it sits flat. So while I was trying it on, I definitely marked with a little pin here. This is where the body of the shirt kind of disappears under her belly. So any waistcoat that we want to add needs to be visible above this mark. Ooh, the stompers. So I just found some scraps of fabric, which I then pinned down to simulate the look of a waistcoat. I've tacked it on, and now I think I just want to try it on before I commit to sewing it down. I finished off the edges by trimming the edges of the fashion fabric, rolling them under twice, pinning them, and then stitching this down with a machine. This way, none of the raw edges are exposed. Gonna, is it time for puppy food? Oh my God. So I'm just sitting here in my living room finishing up some hand stitching on this binding and someone upstairs is having a Harry Potter marathon and the theme song just keeps on drifting gently down through the ceiling. And let me tell you, that is a mood. Like, if all my sewing could have a theme song and it would be the Harry Potter theme song, I'd be alright with that.
So once those strips were sewn out and cut down, I then turned them inside out and pressed them, and these are going to make the belly straps, which will hold the body of the coat around her tummy to make sure it doesn't shift around too much as she runs. Now that we have the belly strap, we need to figure out how to attach the front of this waistcoat to the belly strap so that it doesn't just hang down as she walks, and I think I'm going to use some elastic. This is really crappy old elastic, but it's perfect for this case because it's not too tight, so it's pretty loose and it'll stretch as she moves. So I'm just pinning this down now, I'll iron these edges out later. I'm just guessing on the length here, now we're going to try it out. All in all, I'm super pleased with how this is going. It looks really good in general. You can see it needs a bit of a good pressing and it's uh, these collar flaps keep wanting to pop up. So we need to make sure to give it a good iron. Uh, the belly strap fits very well. We do have a little bit of extra slack here in her stomach. So you can see it's a bit loose and drapey. So I think I'm gonna have to take in that a little bit, but that's a pretty easy fix, and um, we're getting closer and closer. It's starting to look like a real costume now. The one thing I did notice is that the body of the cape does want to shift around a bit too much from side to side, so I'm just going to tack it in with one little stitch. I'm just going to mark it here right now with a safety pin. We'll throw a tack in there and then I think we'll be good to go. I started with two pairs of pants and this is all I have left over. It's cutting it pretty close, I'd say.
Alright guys, that's it. I hope you had fun joining me for the whole process of making this costume. Oh, I'm sorry, am I boring you? Oh, oh thank you. She's hungry. Hope you learned something, or at least were entertained. It's time to go feed the dog, but please consider subscribing if you like the videos. We have some more on the way, some of which involve the corgi, some of which are just me and costuming, sewing, crafting. We upload on Saturdays. Until next week. Bye! <laughs> Janelle, you're messing up my continuity. What are, you, what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs>